our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. Where science meets fiction, here in the small Swiss town of Yverdon, visitors to this very special museum are invited to interact with robots of the future. Life is aggressive, and these are considered an artificial life sculpture. They pretty much move toward your body heat, and so um, the hotter you are, in a way, the more aggressively they move toward you. But they're also a kind of a group consciousness of robots, so they're singing to each other with telephone tones, and they're moving uh, toward you, and also at the same time, they're a little bit afraid of you, like a lot of life. They approach you, but they're also a little bit afraid also. In his work, American artist Ken Rinaldo combines art, movement, and technology. His work is influenced by living systems theory and artificial life. In fact, many of his inventions are not that far removed from reality. For us, science fiction is what we call rational fictional speculation. It uses science and technology to extrapolate mostly about the future or the existence of parallel worlds. Patrick Geiger is the curator of Maison d'ailleurs, the only institution of its kind in the world. It is dedicated to science fiction, utopia and extraordinary journeys, with a particular emphasis on the father of sci-fi, Jules Verne. We will come back to this unusual place later, but first, let's take a trip in space and time to southern Wales to meet leading British sci-fi author Alastair Reynolds. Well, you never stop being a scientist, even though I stopped working as a scientist in 2004. Because I'm the type of science fiction I write has a sort of respect for science, and I try and get the science um, as right as I can most of the time without impeding the, the, the narrative, if you like. But I find that uh, because of that reputation as being a, what they call a hard science fiction writer, it opens doors for me in science. And uh, you know, I've got to meet scientists and uh, astronauts and people like that purely because I'm a science fiction writer with a scientific background. Before becoming a science fiction novelist, Alastair Reynolds worked for the European Space Agency for many years. His technological knowledge has made him a well-respected figure in the field of so-called hard science fiction, characterized by an emphasis on scientific accuracy. It was in 1999, I think, that someone at the European Space Agency got in touch with us and asked us if we thought science fiction could be of interest to engineers. That's how the ITSF project started, innovative technologies from science fiction for space applications. So we collected hundreds and hundreds of ideas going back to the 1940s in books, films, cartoons and other forms of sci-fi products, which might be of interest to engineers. So what is the aim of this project? Scientists at the agency simply want to make sure they're not overlooking any potentially useful concepts from science fiction that could inspire space engineers. As scientific knowledge deepens, today's science fiction could become tomorrow's science. As long as you respect certain rules, says Alastair Reynolds. If I'm writing a book set 150 years in the future, as I am at the moment, I'm thinking about nuclear propulsion, realistic space travel within the solar system. It still takes weeks and weeks to get anywhere. So it's a sort of extrapolation of where we are now. But at the same time, the, the next book, I might say, well, okay, let's, let's go a thousand years in the future. Let's assume that there have been some breakthroughs in physics, so they have maybe the means to get close to the speed of light, but not go beyond it. Something that seemed you know, ludicrously science fictional even 10 years ago, now seems to be a little bit more plausible. Plasma drives, magneto, hydrodynamic propulsion, that kind of thing. These are ideas that uh, a scientist working now in, in, at NASA or European Space Agency may well have encountered 
that idea for the first time in, say, an Arthur C. Clarke novel from 30 years ago. That's the case, for instance, of the iron engine which sent the European smart probe to the moon, or the solar sail, currently under test. In the 1940s, these inventions existed only in the minds of science fiction authors, who were all the rage at the time. It's a cycle of inspiration. Science fiction often works like this. It doesn't invent new technological or scientific concepts. It gets its inspiration from specialist magazines and books and will then make up a story from that, which will in turn inspire other engineers and scientists. Science fiction is not just about extraordinary journeys to faraway planets. It also takes its cue from everyday life. U.S. author Bruce Sterling is a leading figure in the cyberpunk movement, a genre often described as the film noir of science fiction. He says the border between science and fiction is increasingly blurred and welcomes the shift. I'm really happy to see real robots, you know, art robots, on display in a science fiction venue. I think this is the future, really. Just we're going to move from just work in print or work in film uh, into a new world of internet objects, electronic objects, ubiquitous objects, ambient devices. I spend a lot of my time in the electronic art community and uh, the 21st century is going to be full of developments like this. Exploring the shifts in relations between humans and robots and how machines can manipulate people is the aim of this installation by artist Ken Ronaldo. These paparazzi robots are made up of cameras and sensors which move at the speed of a walking human being, seeking to capture photos of people, but only if they smile. Fun, but a bit scary too. Fiction suggests a future, and I think fiction and science fiction asks a question, it proposes a question to us. So I think as artists we often ask conceptual questions and then we try to solve these questions. And art and science, in my opinion, of the best kind, is it's an adventure. It's an adventure of the imagination where we look farther into the future and we try to figure out where the human mind will go. From the depths of the ocean to exploring the universe, man is ever pushing the frontiers further, breaching the gap between science and fiction. And who knows where the journey will end. <laughs>